you know, before I even get into detail of this sparring story, let me go ahead and give you guys a quick rundown. Just in case this is your first time watching my sparring stories, I got to let the people know, all right? Because a lot of people have low attention span. Some people are one-track minded. Some people are extremely impatient, you know, impatient to the point where they want me to just get right to the sparring. They want me to get right to the point. But listen here, dummies are impatient people. Good storytellers build up. Good storytellers are detail oriented. Good storytellers tell you everything from the beginning to the end. And that's what you are going to get on this channel. Okay? So before I hit you guys with the main shebang bang, let's build this house. All right? Now, this whole sparring between Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao started in 2010. Manny Pacquiao was getting ready for an aggressive opponent. I think it was Margarito or Shane Mosley, one of those guys that, you know, Manny Pacquiao was getting ready for. And they needed a tough, aggressive opponent, either similar in some type of way, you know. And Manny Pacquiao also wanted, in fact, you know what? They might have been facing Brandon Rios. One of those three. I just remember the opponent was aggressive and a hard puncher. So, for those of people out there that don't know, Kenny Porter and Freddie Roach, I'm not going to make it seem like they're friends or anything like that, but they always had a high respect level for each other. All right? They always respected each other. So... Manny Pacquiao was he had a gym in the Philippines and he wanted a great sparring partner to fly out to the Philippines so they can get some great sparring in. Keep in mind Sean Porter was about 22, you know, relatively unknown at this time. You know, Sean Porter, it was before he had the titles and all this stuff. So Freddie Roach and Manny Pacquiao didn't know that Sean Porter actually has some type of talent, you know, other than his fast hands and aggressive style. And they found that out once Sean Porter went out there and gave Manny Pacquiao the sparring, which we're going to get into all that in a minute. But I was wondering why Manny Pacquiao wanted Sean Porter to go to the Philippines. I don't know. Maybe to have the mental edge or whatever. Because they could have easily sparred in the US. But I think that was Freddie Roach's idea. To have Sean Porter fly out there. To the Philippines basically. To get the fight popping. And word is you guys. Freddie Roach. And Kenny Porter. Had a heated debate. On why both of their fighters is going to destroy each other. You know, Kenny Porter is letting Freddie Roach know, you know, you got the wrong one. I guess you thought because, you know, we haven't fought the same level opposition as Manny Pacquiao. You think he, just because he has the experience factor, that he's just going to get the best of Sean Porter. But what you're not knowing, Mr. Freddie Roach, and Sean Porter has sparred with guys, the likes of Errol Spence, you know, um, Shane Mosley. Sean Porter has a lot of elite level fighters under his belt. The only problem is, it's sparring. Even guys like Keith Thurman, they sparred several of times. So Manny Pacquiao is not knowing that Sean Porter is the real deal. But as you guys can see right here, Sean Porter was 15 0 or was it 16 0 at the time. So Sean Porter really didn't have no experience. When it came down to fighting Manny Pacquiao anyway. But he definitely held his own. Matter of fact, Sean Porter did more than hold his own. You will know that by the end of this video. But we're still building up, y'all. So be patient. So, Freddie Roach is telling, um, basically making it seem like it's going to be easy work. Um, we're going to stop Sean Porter. You know, he ain't never felt no power like Manny Pacquiao. And keep in mind, y'all, Manny Pacquiao at this time, this is, this is when Manny Pacquiao was knocking out guys like, 
Oscar De La Hoya, you know, stopping Ricky Hatton in the second round. This is when Manny Pacquiao had superpower. But the thing about it is, as you guys can even tell by the frame here, you know, Sean Porter is clearly a lot bigger than Manny Pacquiao. But that's nothing to Manny Pacquiao because Manny Pacquiao is like Mike Tyson. He's used to fighting bigger guys. So that's nothing, you know, nothing. <laughs> so at the end of the day, and this is how Freddie Roach is saying, don't think just because, you know, Sean Porter is a big guy, you know, like that's going to mean anything. You know, Sean Porter is a big guy, but Manny Pacquiao is breaking bigger guys' face. You know, Oscar De La Hoya, Shane Mosley. It's true, you guys. All these guys, Antonio Margarito, Miguel Cotto, all these guys are bigger than Manny Pacquiao. And he is stopping these guys. This is fucking crazy. And this is only allegedly, you guys. But this is also around the time. This is not me saying this, but it, these are strong accusations. Allegations, whatever the fuck you want to call it. This is around the time where people were saying Manny Pacquiao was on steroids, okay? So, for what I'm hearing, you guys, Kenny and Freddie Roach, they just, their back and forth was damn near entertaining as to fight because they was in their locking, y'all. Manny Pacquiao and Sean Porter went to war in the sparring. Just as well as Kenny Porter and Freddie Roach, when it comes down to the mental aspect of the game, they was going to war for their fighters because we all know Manny Pacquiao and Sean Porter, they're nice guys outside the ring, but they're dogs inside the ring. These are facts. And they was mad respectable towards each other. Mad respectable. Manny Pacquiao and Sean Porter was probably too respectable. But they weren't that respectable when they got in the ring. And from also... What I'm hearing, you guys, a lot of people that face Manny Pacquiao, they kind of get starstruck a little bit, and they give him too much respect. Well, Sean Porter wasn't giving Manny Pacquiao none of that, okay? Sean Porter was re respecting Manny Pacquiao until they got in the ring, okay? So they had to separate. I, heard, I even heard they got security to separate Kenny Porter and Freddie Roach. Until the actual sparring went down. Okay. So. Once Sean Porter. Laced up his gloves. Manny Pacquiao laced up their gloves. You know. Put on their. Helmet. Or whatever. Not their helmet. But you know. The headgear and stuff like that. These guys. Was ready to lock. Now let's get into it. Okay. Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao went eight rounds. You guys. Eight rounds of intense sparring. And let me tell you guys this. When it comes down to Sean Porter, everybody who was mostly, you know, Manny Pacquiao's ethnicity, the only black people was, other than Freddie Roach, everybody in there was basically from the Philippines. The only different ethnicities was Sean Porter, you know, Kenny Porter, a few more people from Sean Porter's camp, um, Freddie Roach, and a few more other guys. So it was a lot of Philippines that was watching this epic sparring between Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao. But it even surprised the Philippines and Freddie Roach. Because nobody knew that Sean Porter, this nice guy who was just being so nice be before they actually started to spar. It even shocked me hearing about this, you guys. Because you're supposed to respect Manny Pacquiao. I mean, let's just be honest. But Sean Porter... Went from the nice guy to a mean guy. As soon as that bell rung, Sean Porter ran to Manny Pacquiao with no respect and started letting those hands go, y'all. I mean, Sean Porter was, may sound fucked up to say it. A lot of people don't want to admit this because a lot of people just like Manny Pacquiao. They can't believe this or wouldn't believe this, but the truth of the matter is, Manny Pacquiao almost got stopped in the first round by a young Sean Porter, you guys. That's why it kills me when people say that Sean Porter don't have power. No, Sean Porter has power. And Manny Pacquiao don't have the greatest chin. 
Okay, he's been stopped by far lesser punchers than Sean Porter. All right, so it's not really surprising. Not only stopped, but hurt. Okay, not only that. Sean Porter is a lot bigger than these guys, Marquez. And, you know, we just got to be truthful to ourselves here. But everybody had to give Manny Pacquiao credit for his dog, you know, because Manny Pacquiao could have said, you know what, this is too much. Manny Pacquiao, from what I'm hearing, after getting beat up severely badly in the first round, Manny Pacquiao smacked his head. You know how he does. When he smacked his head and like, let's go. You know, let's go. Let's, let's keep it going. He smacked his head. You know, went to the corner. Took a, a pep talk from Freddie Roach. You know, Freddie Roach is basically cussing Manny Pacquiao out. Like, we got to do something. You know, we can't let this guy come to our hometown and basically whip our ass. You know. <laughs> Kenny Porter is over there. Basically laughing the whole time. Like, well, I told you so, you know. Basically. So that's round one. Round two, they come out. And it's pretty much basically the same thing. You know, Manny Pacquiao cannot handle Sean Porter, you guys. That aggressive, come forward, you know, not respecting you. Throwing punches and bunches. And Sean Porter can do that. For literally two to three minutes of every round, Manny Pacquiao could do that as well. But Manny Pacquiao, he's an ambush fighter. Sean Porter is an ambush fighter as well, but he's an ambush fighter that really don't take breaks. Manny Pacquiao takes a lot of breaks. Like he'll take a break to recover, and then he'll throw his punches. But once he throws those flurries, it's a wrap. And Sean Porter said that Manny Pacquiao really doesn't hit that hard. The only punch that was affecting Sean Porter. But, you know, Sean Porter has a chin as well. Sean Porter said the only punch that was affecting him was the fucking um the straight left hand. And I know that was affecting him because Sean Porter also, his with his style, he runs into the left hand. So he's pretty much adding power to your punch. You know, so that southpaw style was definitely giving Sean Porter problems and the speed because Sean Porter couldn't see that left hand coming at all. Word is, you guys, Manny Pacquiao landed that left hand whenever he wanted. The only problem is it was hard for Sean Porter. I mean, scratch that. It was hard for Manny Pacquiao to land that left hand on the inside, you know, because we all know Manny Pacquiao needs leverage on that. And so, the second round, Sean Porter got caught a few times by Manny Pacquiao with the left hand. But Manny Pacquiao still got beat up. And I mean badly, you guys. I'm not trying to make Pacquiao look bad, smart or smart. But he got beat up badly by Sean Porter in that second round. Not as bad as the first, but in that second round. He was getting beat up, you guys. Okay? So, going into the third you know, Manny Pacquiao was like, you know, I'm going to get it together. I got it, you know, ready to go. To the next three to four rounds, Manny Pacquiao, it was pretty much the same type of fight for most of the fight until Sean Porter did get dropped by Manny Pacquiao. Um, Kenny Porter tried to say that it was a slip, but a lot of people in the gym were saying, that Sean Porter really went down. It was with the left hand. It was about the seventh round. But for the next few rounds, it was a rinse and repeat. You know, Sean Porter didn't show no respect. Didn't even try to box with Manny Pacquiao. He was just putting those paws on Manny Pacquiao. Like, Manny Pacquiao was really distraught. Like, he really didn't have no answers for Sean Porter other than the left hand. And to be honest with you, it's kind of a good thing that he dropped Sean Porter in the last round. Because if it wasn't for that, Manny Pacquiao would have just got dominated by Sean Porter. Okay? And this is the reason why I feel like these fighters better not fight now. Because I feel like out of all the guys, Sean Porter, his style would be probably too dangerous for Manny Pacquiao, y'all. I mean, way too dangerous. Just think about it. Way bigger than Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is about a 140 fighter. He's just 
fights at 147. Um, aggressive, has a chin, you know, fast like Manny Pacquiao. I think Manny Pacquiao might be a little faster, but I don't know about now. You know, Porter fast as hell. And he's fast on his feet. But for what I'm hearing, y'all, the only reason Sean Porter didn't stop Manny Pacquiao was because Manny Pacquiao does have a solid chin, but Manny Pacquiao showed that terrific foot movement. Like, it's hard to cut off the ring on Manny Pacquiao, especially for too long. But, like, Sean Porter would catch Manny Pacquiao, and Sean Porter got most of his success on the ropes because Manny Pacquiao was sitting on the ropes a lot against Sean Porter. I guess he probably didn't have a choice, but he would get out the way of the dodge, y'all. He would get out of the way of Dodge, and he would get away from Sean Porter's shots here and there. But you got to understand, even though Sean Porter might miss two or three, he's coming with threes and fours and sometimes sixes and sevens. So even if he missed three, he might hit home with the next three or miss two and make two, you know, things of that nature. But I'm hearing, y'all, that um Sean Porter, it was just, for every round, Sean Porter literally won every round against Manny Pacquiao. Yes, Manny Pacquiao did land some meaningful shots. The left hand that was catching Sean Porter attention, even pushing him back. But the way he was doing that, he would like, you know, use his foot, use his foot movement basically, use his feet, okay? And then he will launch the left hand. You know, he was kind of playing possum with Sean Porter and then launching the left hand. And that was really bothering Sean Porter. It was bothering Sean Porter so much to the point Sean Porter got dropped in the last round. Now, we all know Sean Porter sometimes gets too reckless or whatever, but Freddie Roach was trying to act like Manny Pacquiao won the sparring just because of that knockdown, which... A lot of people said it was a slip, but a lot of people said it was a knockdown, you know. And plus, Manny Pacquiao needed that. Um, Freddie, Roach, Freddie Roach was even trying to say that if it wasn't for, if we can get some more rounds in, Sean Porter would get stopped easily, okay. Because Sean Porter, he has a gas take on him, but we all know Manny Pacquiao, it's like he has more energy as the fight goes on, especially in that time. So Freddie Roach and Kenny Porter was talking shit at the end. And Kenny Porter is telling, you know, um, Freddie Roach, I told you, you know, I, I'm just being real with you. Nobody was trying to lie to you. I told you Sean Porter is too much of a pit bull for fucking Manny Pacquiao. And then. Freddie Roach is saying his rebuttal was, but we all know fucking um, Sean Porter was out on his feet. He went down, he touched the canvas. But I don't know, y'all. I really think that Freddie Roach was kind of being delusional in that situation because from what I'm hearing, you can argue it was either a flash knockdown or a slip. You know, Sean Porter kind of lost his balance a little bit. But I'm going to give Manny Pacquiao the benefit of the doubt being that you know, the sparring went down in his hometown. You know, Manny Pacquiao was a champion at the time. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, as you would do in the ring, and call that a real knockdown. But, man, it's crazy because Freddie Roach and Kenny Porter almost started sparring, y'all. <laughs> it looked like they was going to fucking spar the way things got heated even afterwards. They didn't even shake hands. We know they're cool now, but at the time, they didn't even fucking shake hands. That's how serious it was. And it kind of looked like Freddie Roach was embarrassed for Manny Pacquiao. And while Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao was showing each other a lot of respect and thanking each other for the great sparring, it looked like the one that was kind of a sore loser was Freddie Roach, you know. And Kenny Porter also told Freddie Roach because... Fucking Freddie Roach is saying that Sean Porter was on the verge of getting stopped, begging Sean Porter to come out for another round. <laughs> and Kenny Porter is like, it's funny that you want us to basically spar y'all for another round when we basically got paid for eight rounds. How about 
We see y'all in the ring. And I promise you, the person that will get stopped is Manny Pacquiao. You don't want to see us for 12 rounds, Freddie. So shut your mouth and stop being a sore loser and just admit, you know, this prospect, Sean Porter, whooped your, your um, fighter's ass. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's the famous sparring session between Sean Porter and Manny Pacquiao. You know, some people might try to deny this, but the person that won the sparring, 7 to 2, you know, because you got to give Manny Pacquiao two points for that last round or whatever, the knockdown round. Sean Porter won. All right, y'all, and that's episode nine to my sparring stories. Stay tuned for more. I'm out.